Has your doctor told you that you don't need to be fasting to get your lab work drawn? If so, you need to watch this video until the end because the fact of the matter is is that there are multiple lab tests that are absolutely affected and give you basically a false number if you're not fasting when you draw that lab. I'm Dr. Ken Berry. I'm a family physician. I've been doing this for 22 years now. And there was a time back during my training and shortly thereafter, where doctors had at least a modicum of common sense, they sort of still understood the human physiology and biochemistry. And so 20 years ago, every doctor told you, you've got to be fasting for your labs. And the typical length of the fast is overnight, 12 to 14 hours. That's going to give you the most reliable numbers for your lab work. And I just wanted to go through the full list of labs that are affected definitely if you're not fasting. Many people, they believe their doctor like, okay, I'll just eat breakfast and then go to the doctor. That affects so many of your lab values. And so when you get those results back, you're actually getting a false number. That's not even the number that is usable to a classically trained doctor. And I'm going to go through the most common labs that you might have drawn that are absolutely affected. But the first, which even most patients, common sense tells them, yeah, there's no way I can eat before I get that check. And that's a uh, glucose. We used to call it a fasting glucose. So that checks your blood sugar in your labs. And if you've eaten any carbohydrates or a good chunk of protein or even a lot of fat, that's going to affect your blood sugar. So Yes, you must be fasting 12 to 14 hours before you get that check. Now, next is the lipid profile or the lipid panel. Your triglycerides are greatly affected when you eat. They shoot up because you're transporting uh, either the, the sugar that you've eaten is being transported as fat or the fat's being broken up and transported as fat. It's going to show up in the triglycerides. You're never going to get a true triglyceride reading unless you fasted for 12 to 14 hours. But now the two most common labs your doctor likes to talk about, your total cholesterol and your LDL cholesterol, both of those are also affected to a lesser degree than the triglycerides, but they're absolutely, you're not going to get a true number if you're not fasted when you get those checked. Now, what about your liver function? The AST and ALT tests are not really affected much by you eating before you get your labs drawn. But your GGT, gamma glutamyl transferase, absolutely affected. Your alkaline phosphatase, which uh, speaks to liver, biliary health, among other things in your body, absolutely affected if you're not fasting when you get the, the lab work drawn. What about your kidney function tests? BUN stands for blood urea nitrogen. is absolutely going to be elevated if you've eaten in the last 12 hours before your labs, especially if you've eaten a good supply of protein. That's going to affect that. Even the creatinine, to a lesser degree, is affected if you're not fasting. You're not going to be getting the true number. The next thing is serum iron, total iron binding capacity, and even ferritin, especially ferritin. They're going to be markedly changed from what your fasting number would be if you've eaten recently when you get the blood work drawn. Now, what about different nutrient levels like vitamin B12, folate, vitamin D? Well, it's kind of common sense. If you've eaten foods that contain those nutrients and you're in the process of digesting them, then your serum transport of those nutrients are going to be ele falsely elevated. What we want to get is your baseline level. That's why we say fast for 12 to 14 hours before you get your labs checked. If you've just eaten a vitamin B12 rich food and you're digesting it and putting it into the bloodstream, your vitamin B12 level is going to be falsely high. What about endocrine tests? Endocrine tests like the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, absolutely affected by you eating within the last few hours before lab draw. Fasting insulin level, it's got, it's got fasting in the name. Your insulin level is going to be hugely elevated if you haven't fasted for 12 to 14 hours before you get it checked. Even your cortisol level is affected when you eat. It's going to be falsely elevated. Now, for those of you who are checking your ketones in your uh, blood, I don't recommend you waste money on ketone strips to check ketones in your urine. It's very unreliable. 
Uh, but if you are doing it, checking your serum ketones, then you have probably already figured out that when you eat, it absolutely affects your ketone levels. But uh, if you have a doctor who wants to check your serum ketone levels, you need to be fasted so that you can see what your ketone levels are in the fasted condition. What about your pancreatic labs, labs that check your pancreas function? Again, the pancreas, one of its main jobs is to help you digest and absorb food. And so if you've eaten in the last few hours before your lab draw, then your amylase and your lipase are absolutely not going to be at the fasting level. You're going to have a false number for those. Now, you, you may be saying, well, if all of these labs are affected, and so let me just tell you, I made this video not based on any new, newly published research. This is just common sense that every doctor should have. You're not going to get a true number for any of these labs if you're not fasting. This is just basic physiology for the human mammal. There's one thing that, that causes this to happen is that doctors can't have all 30 patients that they're going to see that day show up at 8 a.m. for a lab draw. If they do that, their lab tech's going to be very upset with them. And so they also don't want to tell patients, well, you've got to fast until you've had your blood drawn. Well, what if their appointment's at 4, 4 p.m.? They're going to be fasting all overnight and then all the way to 4 p.m. Many people, especially people not eating a proper human diet, that sounds like a special kind of torture. That sounds inhumane. And so doctors don't want to put people out like that. Uh, doctors are just people. They don't want you to be upset with them. And so they'll very often let it slide that you're not fasting, and they'll go ahead and check the labs I mentioned above anyway. Even though if they would think about it for one second, they would realize they're not getting true numbers. And if you're checking a test, but by the way you structured the test, you are by definition going to get false results for the test, then how valuable is that test really going to be to you? You kind of checked it for no reason. The, the patient got, got a needle stick and then either got upset or, or was very proud of their lab results and they're not even a true number. That doesn't help anybody. And so I would encourage the doctors listening to this to remember your basic physiology and also remember so what if you put your patient out a little bit? So what if your lab tech is upset with you? You have to have these labs done in the fasted state or you're getting no useful information whatsoever. And then for people watching this, if you're not eating a proper human diet, you may not want to fast for 12 to 14 hours. It may be uncomfortable. You may think you're going to starve to death, but I promise you won't, okay? You have to fast for 12 to 14 hours before you get any of these labs tested that I just talked about, and then also a long list of other less common labs. So if you have had a doctor tell you you don't have to fast before you get your labs drawn, you might want to share this video with them. You might want to share it with your nurse friend who also said such a thing. You absolutely have to be fasted in order to get true lab results. Hope this video helps. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.